kindergarten, you know that in our social studies class, we've been talking about the past, the present, and the future. And today I brought with me some stories that I want you to take a look at. One's called A Little House Birthday. This one's called Going to Town. This one's called The Deer in the Wood. And finally, this one's called Prairie Day. Well, these are little stories that are taken from bigger stories called the Little House series. And that is one of Mrs. Finkel's all-time favorite book series. And I used to love reading these books, but I also loved having them read to me. I remember my fourth grade teacher read us a lot of those books. And I liked them because when they were read to me or when I read them, I could imagine what it would be like to live in the past. And I could kind of make daydreams about what that would be like. Well, today I'm going to read you the story, A Little House Birthday. And as I'm reading it to you, I want you to think about if the things in the story happen in the past and now, in the present too, or if they just happened in the past, or are there things that just happen now that we do instead of what they did? All right, let's start reading this book from based on a time in the past. Take a look at those pictures there. You see that log cabin? It reminds me as some of the pictures we saw in our presentation the other day when we were talking about things from the past. Once upon a time, a little girl named Laura lived in the big woods of Wisconsin in a little house made of logs. Remember we talked about chopping that wood? Look what she's doing. Do you see that needle and thread? She's just a little girl and she's learning how to sew. Laura lived in the little house with her pa, her ma, her big sister, Mary, her little sister, Carrie, and their good old bulldog, Jack. Jackson, do you think I was talking to you when I said Jack? Yeah, that's a name from the past and a name from right now, right? Here they are. The winter seemed long and Laura and Mary began to be tired of staying always in the house, especially on Sundays. Time went slowly. Look at her gazing out of that window. Every Saturday night, Pa filled the wash tub with fresh snow and put the wash tub on the cook stove. Soon the snow melted to water and it was time for Laura and Mary to take their baths. Laura took her bath first because she was littler than Mary. Then Mary had her bath and then Ma had her bath and then Pa had his. Oh, boys and girls. Now, this is part of living in the past that Mrs. Finkel would not like. Can you imagine how that water would have gotten kind of cold by the time Mary got to get into that water? And I don't know about you, but I love to fill up a great big tub of water. And I even love to keep warming it up with more hot water from the faucet so I can take a not nice hot bath pretty much every night. This was just one day a week they got that bath. Ugh. Now they were all clean for Sunday. And on Sunday mornings, Laura and Mary dressed in their best clothes with fresh ribbons in their hair. On Sunday, they could not run or shout or be noisy. They must sit quietly and listen while Ma read Bible stories to them. They might look at pictures and they might hold their rag dolls nicely and talk to them. But there was nothing else they could do. Oh my goodness, at this time where they were living, they didn't even get to go listen to those stories in a church with other people. They were all by themselves in the winter. Yikes, that would be hard. On Sunday, Laura could not bear it any longer, and she began to play with Jack and run and shout. Pa told her to sit in her chair and be quiet, and Laura began to cry. So Pa took her on his knee and cuddled her and told her a story. Oh, I can't wait. I hope we get to hear the story that her pa tells her. Soon that long Sunday was almost over and Laura lay in her trundle bed with Mary listening to pa sing Sunday hymns with the fiddle. The next sound she heard was ma by the stove making breakfast. 
It was Monday, and Sunday would not come again for a whole week. So look at that. Mary fell fast asleep Why? They were listening to Pa play the fiddle, and she woke up, and it was morning. Do you see how they're all in that same big room? Yep, they didn't have all their own bedrooms. That morning, when Pa came to breakfast, he caught Laura and explained that today was her birthday. Laura was five years old. And I know some of you are five years old, aren't you? Quite a few of you, actually. Pa gave Laura a little wooden man he had whittled out of a stick to be company for her rag doll, Charlotte. Ma gave her five little cakes, one for each year. Look at how happy they look. They're enjoying this special day. Mary gave her a new dress for Charlotte. Mary had made the dress herself when Laura thought she was sewing on her patchwork quilt. So she had to be tricky. She was sewing this little dress for her sister's doll with her little sister right there and her sister didn't even notice it. She was sneaky. That night for a special treat, Pa played Pop Goes the Weasel on his fiddle for Laura. Now watch, he said, watch, and maybe you can see the weasel pop out this time. Do you think she's going to see a weasel? Do you know what a weasel is? Yes, yeah, a little furry animal. Now, if you go way back to the beginning of that story, it was actually part of a tool they used when they were making um, spinning cloth. But we think of it as the furry little animal. Then he sang, all around the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. The monkey thought it was all in fun. Pop goes the weasel. A penny for a spool of thread, a penny for a needle. That's the way the money goes. Pop goes the weasel. Yeah, you've heard that one before, haven't you? And look at the house there in the woods in the winter time. But Laura and Mary hadn't seen Pa's finger make the string pop. Oh, please do it again, they begged him. Pa's blue eyes laughed and the fiddle went on while he sang. But he was so quick, he could never, they could never catch him. So their daddy would do a trick and they would think maybe it was the weasel going by. So they went laughing to bed and lay, lay listening to Pa and the fiddles singing. It had been a happy birthday in the little house in the big woods. There they are by the fire staying warm. Remember we saw the chimney the other day and we talked about how they could use that to cook there or for warmth. And that's what they're doing. And there's... Laura falling fast asleep with Charlotte, her doll. All right. Well, boys and girls, I think as I was reading that story, you were probably noticing some things from the past that were different than the way we live now. Did you notice that there was no electronics in the house? Yep, I didn't see one TV, one cell phone. I didn't see any radios even the music they had was from dad's fiddle i noticed that the kids had chores remember they were learning to sew that's a big job well let's go look at a couple things that were mentioned in the story and let's see if we can figure out if they're from the past or right now what we call the present or let's see if we can figure out how to make this go from both. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you these circles that I have. Do you see this? Aren't they kind of fun? You can fold them in funny ways, but you can make them into circles. I'm going to use this blue circle to represent things that happened or were from the past. Then I'm going to take this red circle and I'm going to lay it on top. Now, do you see this area in the middle? That's going to be for things that are in the past and in the present. And this part over here that's only red is going to be for things we only see now. 
All right, well, let's talk about the Bulldog Jack. Now, you know this isn't Jack the Bulldog. I know, I'm just pretending. It's our friend Stretchy. Our pets only from the past, only from now, or both? What do you think? All right, help us out. Uh, go ahead, Martin. Yeah, both. Because Laura had her Bulldog Jack, but many of you also have pets, so we know they can be from both. All right, let's figure out something else. How about a birthday cake? This is for Laura's fifth birthday. Could you enjoy a birthday treat in the past, just now, or both? Mm, I'm thankful to say you're right. They're from both the past and now. People celebrated their birthdays. Okay, right, let's, let's take a look at this one. What do you think? A good old, well, it's a transformer that's already transformed. Oh, there we go. What do you think? Is this a toy that children would have played with in the past, both, or just now? Right, now, maybe the past is when your dad was little, but not in the way past, like when Laura was little. So we're gonna put our little friend Bumblebee over here in the area that's just for things now. All right, how about this one? Ooh, now this is an old fashioned cradle made of wood. See that? It kind of rocks back and forth. There's a baby with a bonnet. Do you think that this baby was from the past? Both now and in the past, or just now? Yeah, that's true. You could get an antique cradle and put a baby in it now, but most people don't leave babies in cradles like this anymore because they could fall out, right? So we're gonna put that in the past. Very good. Okay, here comes another one. Where do you think this toy is? Do you think this is representing way in the past? Like with Laura in the book? Right now or both? Yeah, it's tricky because it's made out of wood. Is it making you think? All right, Logan Q, what do you think? Aha! It is made out of wood so that it looks like it's a bit old fashioned, but back in Laura's day, they wouldn't have a car. You're right, so we're gonna put that in the just now area. All right, now this one I've got a little bit of explaining to do. I know that this is made of plastic, right? But we're pretending that this is made of wood and they didn't buy it from the store. They had to make it themselves. That's what we're gonna pretend for this chair. Okay, what do you think, Kylie? Yeah, if it was a wooden chair that they made all by themselves, we would think of that more in the past. Now, could someone who's really crafty make a chair out of wood now? Sure. I know my dad's fixed some of our chairs that have broken. That's similar. But we're pretending that this is an old-fashioned wooden chair like the one Pa sat in as he played his fiddle. All right, our last one. What do you say about this book? Is the book something from the past? Now or both? I am very happy to say we can put it in the area for both. Maybe people use other things than books right now. Maybe they use like a tablet to read on also. But I'm happy to say that we had books in the past. We still have books now. So I'm gonna put that in the middle. All right, boys and girls, let's take a little closer look at this. Can you see how that worked out? A little bit hard to show you on here. But, yeah, the things in the middle are from both. Here's the things that were just, I'm not getting them very well, am I? And the blue are just in the past. And here's the things that we're just talking about now. In the present, the robot toy up in the car. All right, boys and girls. So that's a little bit about things from the past and things now. We did some comparing and contrasting. Before we're done with our social studies for the day, I want to talk to you about another idea. So I'm going to move over our toys here. And I'm going to make a little bit of a chart. Do you know what this word says? 
This word says need. This is for things that we need. Hmm, I think. Maybe Mrs. Finkel should have put this on chart paper. I'm trying to use the iPad since the other isn't working and I don't have this trick down. This is for things that we want. Do you know that everybody has things that they need to live? And we also have things that we want to have. But if we didn't have them, we would still keep living. We might be disappointed, but we would still keep living. Are you guys getting a headache from Mrs. Finkel moving this around? I hope not too badly. All right. So just when I thought I was made at the iPad for the volume not working, or the laptop, now I'm a little bit not happy with the iPad because I don't know how to work it. All right, and here's the things that we want. Now I'm going to show you some cards and we're going to make a decision. Is it something that we have to have to live or could we still live without it? Let's take a peek and see. Hmm. There we go. All right, let's take a look at this. This shows games. Is a game something we need to live or is it something that we want? You're right, a game is something we want. We would still live without it. How about the sunshine? Can we live without the sun? No, we need sunlight because sunlight helps the plants grow so that we have food and it gives us warmth. We're losing our words here, aren't we? All right. Let's look at another one of our cards. Let's look at, oh, this is a cup, but I'm pretending like it's a cup with water in it. Do you need water to live? Yes, you do. You could not live very many days without water because your body is mostly made up of water. You have to keep drinking it. How about a bike? Do you have to have a bicycle to live? No, you might want it real badly. It might be very helpful to help you get places, but it's a want, something we want to have, but we don't have to have it. How about food? Is food a need or a want? You're right, it's a need. If we don't have food, our bodies won't have energy. We would not stay healthy and we could not do things. Okay, so we need to have food. All right, next I've got a mitten and that's gonna stand for clothing. Do you need to have clothing? Yes, clothing helps to protect your body from the heat. It helps to protect your body from the cold and it gives you privacy. So that's something that we need. All right, now we're gonna take a look at this. Do you have to have toys? No, you may really want to have toys but you could live without them. Okay, how about a tent? You know what, boys and girls, this is standing for something we call shelter. Shelter is like your house, what protects you from the weather. And you're right, you do need protection from the weather. You need to have shelter. So I'm gonna put that on the need pile. All right, here's a trick one for you. Do you need to have gold or money? It's a trick one. You may have heard your parents say, hey, I have to go to work because I need to earn money. And why would they need money? To buy our food, to pay for the water bill, to buy our clothing. Now, just money alone, you could live without it if you could grow your own food. If you could get your own water. All right, so we're gonna call that a want, but we're gonna understand that we need to have a way to get our needs. And sometimes that's by earning money. 
All right, how about this one? Do you need other people in your life? This one shows dad. If I had another one, it could show mom. Mm-hmm. It would be fun to have one of both, wouldn't it? Do you need other people? Yes, you do. Human beings need people and they need love in their life. So that's why we work really hard to keep the relationships with the people we know healthy so that we can have love in our life and other people to help us. All right, boys and girls. Well, my little chart didn't work out too well, but we do know that we learned about things that we need to survive. We learned about things that we want to survive. And we found out that there are things that are a little bit confusing, that we feel like we need them, but it could just be a want. All right, boys and girls, I hope you're not too dizzy from this iPad moving around, but I hope that it also is a little bit louder for you today. All right.